I'm not sure if I will explain this in any sense because I'm not an expert and uh, maybe I shouldn't talk about it but uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting uh, theory that was uh, presented uh, in the news by a guy from the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Switzerland which, uh, which uh, claims that, uh, that we can see effects of the future in the present. Uh, and I tried to explain it a little bit the way I understand his theory. And it also links to the determinism uh, debate if you have a, a religious background and you think that God determined the future or you think that scientists think that everything is coincidence, you might be surprised because that's not really true. First of all, there's time. How do we recognize time? Well, basically, uh, for humans, we just see changes and then we assume that time has passed or that's how we experience it. There's some changes in our, our mind and in the external reality and that's how we experience time. But of course on the scientific, uh, uh, let's say, perspective, there's no future, there's no present or th there's no past, there's only the present and the present really is always changing into a future. So the present is also not really there. It's a very difficult uh, concept if you're not really uh, ready for it, but uh, time doesn't really exist. The only thing that exists are, 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 are stuff, let's say electrons, mesons, neurons, uh, uh, whatever, and the interactions between them. And those interactions create new stuff, uh, photons, uh, if you have an LED it creates photons and it creates new, uh, uh, and new interactions of course, because when those photons hit your eye you get new interactions with your eye and set and then you see the photon and all those processes are interactions and together they create the illusion for us of time because we register it and we can go back and we can recreate a little bit in our mind etc. But for a scientist now is basically a bunch of stuff and, uh, and their interactions and nothing, nothing more and there's no time. And these the, the stuff basically is a deterministic thing because there is only this, uh, there no, if there's an electron then it can turn maybe into a photon. But if there's no electron it cannot turn into a photon. And if it's not an electron but a proton then it cannot do the th same thing as the electron. So there's rules that basically say that if you have certain stuff you can only make certain other stuff through these interactions. And then they say well, and that's where the probability and, and, and the chance and the and the coincidence uh, uh, angle comes from, the scientists say, well, you know, if there's an interaction, there are really an infinite number of options, or actually uh, described certain specific number of options, and you really don't know what's going to happen until it actually happens, and then you have one of those options. That's quantum probability, which says, let's say reality, <laughs> you know, you can imagine if reality had to decide what was going to happen next every time something had to happen, it would be stuck it would not move. So there, so the decision what interaction out of the many possible interactions will take place cannot take time because otherwise there wouldn't be any interactions. I hope you can understand that. That's why quantum computing is so interesting because it can consider many options uh, without using time. So it's really, 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 really fast. Anyway, the problem at CERN or the situation at CERN is such that they say, well, there is a process now, there's a plan, of course, everybody knows about it, to create a Higgs boson, which is a particle. And the problem with that is, of course, you, you do all kinds of stuff, all these matter things uh, interact and so, on a much larger scale, on a macro scale, uh, you know, people walk around, they have these machines, and uh, they put electricity in it, and things move, and suddenly you have a particle. And you either have it or you don't have it. And these scientists say, well, it can't happen. It is something that is just scientifically, the universe doesn't want this to happen. The Higgs boson cannot exist. That's basically their theory, or something like it. They say there's a future that just cannot be. But now because that future is either there or not there, it's a particle that either uh, uh, you know, exists or doesn't exist, it has no way to kind of avoid it, you know, not, not like two magnets that you try to push together and then they repel each other, you know, they have a way to avoid it because there is on, on a larger scale, but on this micro, on this quantum scale, it's really no way to avoid being or not being. If you're being created, then there's no way around it and you are. So it sounds all very philosophical, that's why I find it interesting. 
So the only option you have is either to do something about the interactions, but that's very hard because they are ruled uh, by all kinds of laws and they're constant. You know, if if these interactions would have to change, you would have to change the, the, the laws of nature. And that's that's let's say that's a no-no because then the universe would fall apart. So the only option you have is basically that the stuff that is now that there's something wrong with it, and it cannot. Uh, through interactions result in a future with the Higgs boson. That's what they say. So their prediction is something will go wrong. There will be accidents, there will be uh, uh, stuff on a macro scale, on a, on a scale that you and I can see, that will go wrong and they say, actually what they say is, they have already gone wrong. That's what the accident was that they had a, a year ago, which delayed the whole Higgs boson creation a year. And that's, I think, a very interesting theory, and I hope you uh, <laughs> you can appreciate my attempt to try to explain it. And I link nec I link to the article next to this video.